Okay. Uh, so thank you so much for telling us how you feel. It's good to see the new faces with Michelle. And it's good to know that um, Patrick is enjoying the hot weather in Sanya. Um, the agenda for today is pretty simple. Uh, we will introduce who is new. Uh, Lucas is going to take us through um, the introduction and then also take us through what is new. And then we have a Q&A session and then departure round. In, in between, I think Giuseppe will also assist. So on that note, I pass it on to um, Giuseppe to introduce the regional mentor. Yeah, actually, um, this is uh, <clears throat> this is the new community that was onboarded in the latest weeks, and uh, I will uh, immediately pass the ball uh, to Merlin because uh, he is the um, he is the one who actually onboarded the, uh, this new community. And so please, Merlin, explain introduce us very quickly uh, what is it about and uh, how this new community can. Uh, um, find the, in the arc a solution to their needs. Um, yes, thank you, Giuseppe. Um, yeah, this is the Tausi community, um, which was actually the first community that I onboarded as a regional mentor. So that was exciting. Um, yeah, they are a group of families um, who um, meet once a year for, I think, the last 30 years um, to dance and sing together. Um, it's quite a big group and um, now new the new generation is kind of taking over the organization and now they are looking for alternative solutions for um, promoting what they do and attracting new um, new members basically um, right so if we go to the next slide um, so what they what they need on the arc is um, so they have their own website and they would like to use their own website uh, but also are very open to promoting what we do on the arc and using it for for their purposes um, which is why they would need the arc functionalities to be embedded in their website and also they have quite difficult or let's say complicated um, booking systems with various types of accommodations and packages that um, is a bit difficult to integrate in the current booking system on the arc but uh, i think we'll figure it out right that's it from me okay thank you you're welcome um okay so then uh Lucas would have to do the uh, introduction instead of mute. I think I think I I think I can uh, I think I think I can take this and I will lead to uh, the part where actually uh, Lucas is going to introduce later all the functionality. So now the, the 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 slide that you see now is uh, an overview of all the main uh, topics and concepts that stands behind. Uh, the, the art project. As we uh, like to say, if this is uh, not your first call, we probably know that we often say that the arc is um, uh, so, uh, some, an idea that, may, that comes from the meeting uh, or in, from the intersection of uh, three main concepts that are ecology, education, and uh, technology, where by technology we often mean uh, mostly uh, communication and uh, technology, but uh, not only. So uh, this, the, the topics that you see here, ecology, pedagogy, uh, pedagogy organization, neurology, technology, library, and uh, economy are all uh, brought together by the tool of uh, technology. What we try to do uh, every time we try to explore uh, one of those concepts, and uh, uh, one of the developments that uh, Lucas is going to introduce later is uh, uh, exactly one. Uh, is exactly uh, one of those. It's specifically, it's uh, uh, the library. Uh, so please switch to the next uh, slide. So the library concept is the place where, uh, on the arc, all the best practices are collected. <clears throat> This uh, the, the idea to use to have a library comes from the uh, concept of uh, uh, commons. 
Now, uh, if every community is uh, on the arc is considered a global common, so every one of your organizations has the potential to uh, create best practices uh, that can be uh, that have a value and uh, have a value because they are developed by people that have connected by uh, a topic that, uh, that, that, that connected by a mission, which is what uh, uh, keeps people together in each and every organization that is identified as a community on the arc. Now, what the arc wants to be is uh, a place where all these uh, or best practices can be uh, connected. Um, the is example that we have is uh, Wikipedia that is uh, comes easy to the mind and is what we can call a global commons. And this uh, uh, so that is where you can find all of these uh, best uh, practices uh, collected uh, by the uh, communities that develop them. But also every community can take down one of those uh, archived uh, best practices and uh, duplicate it again. So they, they is, uh, it's an activity that can be done in both direction, either an event or a course, as you as uh, Lucas will uh, show us later, can, can be uh, found on this global commons library and can be downloaded and adapted to the local necessities. But it comes from another uh, local community that uploaded that. So each of your the events that you create, if you feel like, you can share it because sharing is the most uh, um, important uh, step that we can do in uh, in our digital uh, digitally connected uh, uh, lives, and it's a way to it's a way to bring the bright side of uh, technology into our into our experience. And this this is what we try to do uh, on the app. And uh, the future developments of this community of this functionality will also uh, allow all the learners to rate the quality of uh, of this activity and uh, the facilitators to rate the quality of the, uh, the activity that they are going to guide. So in this way, the final users, the participants, will uh, be presented with an activity that has been rated by a global community. And at the same time, the facilitators will be will get the credit for the activity that they have designed. Uh, and with this system, it's a fair system that uh, is not, uh, uh, does not come after any kind of algorithm, but just uh, from the real experience of people on, uh, on field. So, um, uh, uh, interrupt me. I mean, uh, if there is no uh, specific question behind uh, this uh, uh, this concept, I hope I was uh, clear enough <laughs> to, to to present the, the idea behind. Now we can go to put uh, the hands on with uh, Lucas that we, is going to show us what's new for this release, and uh, especially at the end of it, uh, this uh, how the library works. All right, so uh, thanks, Giuseppe. And uh, we will uh, demonstrate hopefully a little bit uh, uh, how we have uh, implemented uh, this concept uh, on the platform. Um, so I'm, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, there we go. You guys see my screen? Yeah. All right, great. So uh, as Every month, uh, I'm going to update you with uh, what uh, has been uh, done on, on the ARC uh, and um, explain a bit uh, why and what it is. So let's start um, with one of our manual videos. So uh, some of you might know that uh, Giuseppe, uh, our uh, communications master, uh, uh, is producing one video usually per month which is uh, explaining various functionalities of, uh, of the ARC. It's basically, uh, instead of a, a written manual, we have decided to produce videos because uh, 
this way it's more and more accessible to people. So uh, you might uh, remember from uh, what Merlin said that uh, the Tausi community um, wanted to embed the ARC functionalities onto their website. So we already have this um, functionality. Uh, you might remember if you have been joining for a while. So if you have your own website and uh, uh, you would like to put the events that uh, you are putting on the ARC onto your website, then you can do it. So let's have a look how it's done on the Green Steps website. And uh, just to be clear about it, okay, let's scroll through all the, all the people involved. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, here you can see uh, that for the upcoming events feature on uh, the Green Steps website, uh, which is different from the art, right? <laughs> uh, we are embedding the, uh, the events uh, mm -hmm. straight from the ARC. So basically, as Green Steps put a new event on the ARC, it automatically shows in here. Um, and by clicking on it, you end up in the ARC. Uh, so Giuseppe and uh, together with Richard, I believe, uh, made a video about this. Um, and uh, we're going to share the link to the video um, with you uh, inside of the chat. So actually, I can do it right away. I just did. Oh, you just did it. All right. But you didn't do it in the element one. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, we're going to share the video with you. And maybe you're interested to, to, to watch it later. Second news, uh, every month we are trying to push for a new language um, that the platform is available in. So I'm very happy to announce that uh, with uh, this month, we are covering uh, Russian, uh, which is a huge piece of the earth. Uh, and uh, uh, a lot of really cool people as well. So uh, hopefully we will see uh, some uh, events happening in uh, Russia and Ukraine. It's a complete translation, really uh, nicely done. Uh, I can show you a little bit. It's uh, to me, it feels really cool to see the arc uh, in a different alphabet. <laughs> so, if you have some Russian friends, so you can send them a link. And um, just for your information, the way the platform works is it checks the language of your browser. So, if you are coming to the arc for the first time, and your browser and your operating system, your computer is in Russian, it's going to automatically be shown in Russian. But otherwise, of course, there is this uh, switch on the top. Uh, and then you can check all the languages that are currently available. All right, so back to English. <laughs> otherwise, I'm lost. <laughs> and uh, what's the next point? Uh, so next thing is also about German. Uh, besides uh, Chinese, I think, besides Chinese and English, I think German is the third most used uh, language that people are accessing the platform and get a substantial update. So if you uh, have been using it in German and uh, you saw it in many parts were not translated, should uh, uh, be back to almost complete. Um, thank you guys for doing the translation. I think it, uh, it was Merlin or Pascal. Okay. Um, more than most, yes. Merlin. And there was a change. Was me. <laughs> Thank you, Merlin. You're welcome. I'll be ashamed that uh, the ARC is still not available in Czech, which is my mother tongue. Mm. Uh, <laughs> probably I should do it. Maybe I should ask my mom to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next thing. Um, so to keep in touch with the platform, we um, we have a bunch of notifications. The first notifications that we came up with were about people having a new booking and the changes in their bookings. So this is notifications that both uh, participants and the communities receive. Now, um, many people said that uh, they would like to be notified about new members that are joining their community. Mm -hmm. So uh, last uh, month, Actually, Sonia, next to me, has developed this functionality. So uh, every time that there is a new member uh, joining your community, and uh, I can show it to you directly, uh, STP, 
are bookings STP. Every time that there is a new member, there is a, a notification like this. Uh, there is a new membership request in your art community. Ahmed El Afifi, mm -hmm. which is uh, sitting over there, <laughs> <laughs> would like to join your community. And um, so this way, basically, people can be accepted much, uh, much faster. Um, yeah, the next uh, notification that we will be working on is uh, when people receive their impact points into their profile so that they can stay more up to date with uh, uh, what's happening uh, after participation of uh, inside of the event. So this notification is sent, can be sent to um, a Slack or Element, which is what many organizations are using. Uh, they can be sent to Telegram and they can be sent by email. There is also a manual video about that, uh, mm -hmm. if you are interested. <laughs> All right, so uh, today, nobody from the Americas uh, is joining, but uh, we had a little bit of a faux pas uh, this week with uh, onboarding two uh, communities in, in the USA, and uh, they were not able to uh, choose USA as, uh, to choose North America as, uh, as a continent. Um, so basically, we are trying to go away from the nation states concept, right? That's why we are not uh, letting people uh, choose in which country they are. But uh, as a compromise, uh, we are currently using the continents. And um, so right now, all the continents are in there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have added a bunch of currencies as well. We added uh, the Korean won and uh, the Russian ruble and the American dollar um, that can be set as currency for a uh, price of a ticket to uh, participate in, uh, in your events and courses. So if you have any need, uh, it's very easy to extend. So please just let us know. Good. And um, now I'm getting back to the concept of commons that uh, Giuseppe was talking about. Um, so, I uh, believe that uh, uh, sharing is uh, the only way to, to become stronger. And um, that's exactly what we need uh, with uh, environmental and sustainability education. So our take on it with um, sharing um, the real things that can be implemented in the real world, real world, um, I think this can be pretty powerful. So what we have finished uh, this month is that uh, current now the library can contain not only uh, events, but it can only contain it can also contain courses. So let's have a look at uh, one of the courses that is uh, currently uh, being run in um, the St. Pölten community of, uh, of Green Steps, and that's the general growth. Uh, it's a program that uh, Green Steps and uh, basically Knut has developed. Um, uh, it's film screenings with a moderated discussion and it's all prepared with moderation materials, with the films, with subtitles, uh, with questions that uh, can steer the discussion. So you can enter the course. And uh, so this is the course as an activity. This is the course that is running right now and uh, people can join it uh, it's the sessions which are there on concrete dates, right? So mm -hmm. this is a specific course that is being run by the Green Steps. And it's been run already several times. I ran it once in Kopangan in Thailand. It was run two times in Shanghai. Now it's being run in here in St. Pölten. So now you can really think this is becoming a best practice. This is a program that has been verified. It works. and uh, it is now ready to become a best practice and be shared with others in the common library so that others can continue creating impact and can already make use of the substantial amount of work that has been put into this, right? So until now, you could only create library best practices out of events. Now, if you have a course that you would like to share with others, you can go to its dashboard and uh, there is a button of uh, create a best practice. So with this button, uh, I will create a best practice out of this activity. And it will create a draft of it, 
and uh, pre-fill all the uh, common fields with whatever I have already done uh, by creating this uh, course. So I will create it in the um, Robin Hood community because that's our beta core community. Uh, you all, I hope that everyone is member here. <laughs> okay, let's go and create the best practice. And uh, I'm, I'm not gonna go in details in here. Uh, basically, most of you probably already saw, I'm gonna just go quickly over it. Um, uh, this is uh, who has designed the best practice and which community. And here, the new thing is that it is a course and it's gonna be public. Uh, in the overview, I, I could change uh, uh, the title of it. So, Gene and Growth uh, for Robin. And uh, this is all pre filled from, from the previous, um, it's all pre filled from the activity, right? And uh, so the bulk of the work is um, in the step number three, where uh, you can see the sessions, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, these are then the single events inside of the course, right? So it's the name of the session, description of it, uh, and uh, the impact points so that are associated with this mm -hmm. session. Yeah. So let's go. Of course, then uh, what do you have to do by yourself when you are uh, creating a best practice out of uh, an existing event is that in the pedagogy and facilitation part, this is the part which is specific to the library. And this is what you need to uh, fill by yourself. And this is now basically all the meta information that you want to provide about, uh, about the activity. So this is the basically the upper part the uh, let's say the added value of if you were just creating a template, right? It's not only a template; it's a template plus information about uh, how to make it worth uh, attending, how to make it uh, uh, educational and impactful, right? So these are things mostly from the Montessori pedagogy principles, and in step number five, it's mostly about uh, what do you need to facilitate and upload some files and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm uh, not gonna publish it because uh, this is uh, not really ready, but I can I can go to uh, to its page. So this is currently a draft, and uh, in here the difference from the other uh, library uh, events uh, is that the courses have the session tab in here. And uh, in here you can see uh, overview of all the sessions inside of the course with, uh, with their uh, impact points. And now, of course, uh, other uh, facilitators in other communities can find this best practice. And if they find it interesting, what they do is that on the top of the card, they create activity out of this best practice. And this is basically the other way around, right? So I upload it into the global commons, our local practice. And now somebody else uh, in a different place in the planet can download from this global commons into their local community. And that's, called, that's this create activity button that uh, is uh, uh, doing it. So let's uh, do it. Uh, I can do it in my testing community, which is uh, which one? Uh, the hidden hidden society. <laughs> That's my development uh, community. Yeah, and uh, this is then the other way around. I'm creating a course out of uh, this best practice. Uh, so I'm gonna just show, show it to you um, quickly, uh, uh, so that you have the the whole picture of the upload and download. Yeah, of course, you have to do things like you have to fill in when is the start of the course, when is the end of the course, what is the location. And uh, the same you have to do in all the all the sessions. Yeah, and step number three, you have the sessions pre-filled and you have to select the starting date, the ending date, uh, and 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. This is this is the event. I'm I'm, I'm going to go and uh, delete it now. So it's, it's not uh, it's not uh, confusing anyone. <laughs> that's that's it from from my side. And uh, let's go and uh, get into the Q and A. So any questions? I will stop sharing now and uh, let's get uh, directly into the discussion. So it can be about any of the functionalities. It can be about the concept of uh, the commons. It can be based anything that any question that uh, came on your mind. Well, Lucas, uh, the, the, the Camisa has got one activity yet, and this was this uh, creation of the permaculture mandala. Um, I realize when I, I'm listening to you that uh, this is not suitable to become a best practice. If I would um, upgrade this, uh, I would need actually to uh, bring in all the documentation that was behind the creation. So this is in my head, but um, how can I if, if I have to write down all the principles that are applied in uh, the creation of this mandala, it would take a lot of time. So um, I don't know. Um, this this documentation part seems to be a very important uh, issue. Um, how should I do that? Bring, bring in books that, that you can find on the internet? Uh, I don't know. Uh, quotations uh, that we pick up from other people. Um, well, that, that's that's uh, basically uh, how to, to, to document a uh, best practice in order, uh, an activity in order to, to bring it to, to the level of uh, a best practice so that it can be used by others. Well, that would be yeah. my question. <laughs> What it is, right? I mean, you have to ask yourself the question: How can I let give others enough enough information to so that they would be able to organize it in a meaningful way, right? And then, so I think that the first uh, step uh, can be to really go through uh, through the form that we have prepared. Uh, so, of course, the way to create the best practice uh, is designed in a way uh, to lead people to think about uh, their activities in, uh, in a pedagogical way. So you can create a draft of it, you know? So that's the default when you start to create something, it's a draft that's only for you and you can work on it slowly. You will always find it in there and, uh, and see how it goes. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that it's good to start with something, you know, and then you can always improve on it later. I, I, I think uh, this is a strategy that has worked pretty well yeah, for me. Exactly. But, uh, I think it, 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 it will end up. It will end up to to become a kind of permaculture course, basically. Yeah, exactly. I think that the that the the entry bar is low. You know, uh, just go through the uh, form. Yeah. And try to share whatever you have already in uh, on hand. Uh, you can upload files if you have some. You can uh, put links to things that you found useful. You know, you can link uh, videos that you found useful. Um, things like that. Yeah. yeah okay. Thank and you. Of course, Lucas. I think, uh, get in touch if uh, there can be any help from from us. Oh uh, well. Man, man, tour. <laughs> I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, man, tour. All right. Um, anything else? Uh, any other comments from anyone? <clears throat> Maybe not specific to uh, to the presentation that we, we you we just had, but 
I remember Michelle at the beginning uh, was mentioning that uh, like she didn't really know what uh, a regional mentor is. Maybe today is it could be a, a time to explain. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. <laughs> Um, should I? Maybe, maybe I, I can do that. So, so the, the idea behind the regional mentors is that uh, they are people who understand uh, the platform and the concept behind and are kind of power users, which means they, they know how to, how to use it very well and also how to explain to others that um, uh, even the things that are not super clear yet, because it's a work in progress, right? And uh, then uh, act as uh, multiplicators so if they know someone who they think would be a good fit to join the community and uh, to make use out of the tool uh, then reach out to them and then uh, as the mentor uh, on board a new community which means they bring them on the arc they become uh, kind of a point of contact for for the new community so that means that if I am in Thailand and I'm talking with um, the, a community in there called Labra Cadabra, which is like a local sustainable uh, co-living uh, space, then if they have any uh, problem or if they have any suggestion or if they um, have any feedback, then uh, I become the point of contact for them. And also I try to reach out to them uh, proactively in this current state of uh, of development. I go to them every month and I say, how is it going? Uh, did you make any events? Uh, you didn't make any events because uh, you don't have events or is there, if, is there any trouble? Is there a feature that is crucial for you that is missing or uh, how has been your experience? Uh, basically, I, I'm collecting uh, the feedback and making uh, sure that uh, uh, they can use uh, the tool and uh, be part of the community so um yeah anyone wants to take on this also uh, this is uh, my explanation we have some new mentors in here uh there's michelle merlin uh gloria uh, all of you guys uh, have been onboarding communities oh, probably not michelle yet but uh, merlin and gloria have yeah yeah i said i said everything <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, something that we also do for original mentors is we have trainings. I mean, at least Knut did a training for us, which I think you could also take part of if you want to become a mentor. Like, I'm not sure how often he does those training. Maybe just you, we can ask him to do once, once we have like a few people that want to do it, and you can take part of his training. And then it would be probably Knut, yeah, to show me teaching you, like. Pretty much what Lucas said, but more in detail. Yeah, just practically. Yeah. Because, of course, the, the idea, like the arc only will become powerful if, uh, if it is truly global, right? And uh, this is the goal. Um, and uh, I think this is the way to, to start. Yeah, and more, more you use the platform, more you learn by yourself as well. <laughs> and yeah, without using it, it's difficult to be a man. Um, in this sense, in this sense, I also wanted to um, say that um, if you need help also with the Spanish translation, I can do it. So we have also because like for me, like the reason why I want to I wanted to be a part of the arc is also I want to make connections with America um, to South America. And um, um, so for me, it will be nice to do it into Spanish. Cool. We, we already have a part which Javier did from the Huku Summit. Uh, but uh, it's, it's not integrated yet. Uh, so let's say that uh, I should be able actually to, to put all the partly done languages next week in, and then we can do the update for that. Cool. Then, uh, yeah, if there are no more, no more questions, then I will uh, give the moderation back to Richard, and I think we can do the, the departure round, or is there anything else on, on our agenda? Over. Yeah, I think um, then we can do the departure on if there is no sharing. Uh, from my side, um, since I've been part of the moving of the um, 
library from the old to the new, I have learned quite a lot. And uh, in the spirit of sharing, I think this is actually a great functionality that we have because then there's no need for someone to um, start something from scratch if they want to organize an event, which is similar to what you what others have organized. So indeed, it's a great functionality that you, you have on the archive. Um, yeah, that's what's on my mind. And um, I think um, it will actually improve the way people use, the way communities use or organize activities uh, on the ARC. Yeah. So then I pass it on to where it ends. What do you pass around and for what we think about the functionalities? Merlin? Sorry. There was no to Merlin. Merlin. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I missed it. Um, yeah. Um, good, good, good news on the functionalities. Um, I, I knew about most of them anyway before, but great to have something uh, new to show. Um, yeah. Um, Hans, what do you think? Yeah, thank you, Marlin, and also thank you, team. Uh, it's another round of great uh, developments. Um, I think for community members, it's really helpful to have this membership approval, less so to, to keep out people, more so to have an idea of what's going on. And um, also the other functionality like Russian language or the embedding is, uh, I think, is really signs of... Uh, development that things becoming very mature and really ready for more and more communities around the world. So thanks a lot and uh, keep going. And I'm giving the torch to Chris. Well, again, also thanks. I think the overall platform uh, approach is, let's say anyhow, for, for all the guys like me, very dynamic and very enjoyable. One question arises from me still to this, to the overall framework, because you presented, Lucas, you presented basically the framework, but would there ultimately be any sort of content committee? Yeah, because as you said, you can either what they have links to movies and so forth, but of course you can have movies with this narrative or with this narrative. And this is always a little bit the issue. Would there be sort of a content, either approval or a committee who, who gives the basic, the basic uh, guidelines or frame, frameworks for content? Have you any idea, any thoughts on this? Right. So, so the the, the way that uh, we want to use is uh, basically off offloading this to um, to the users. So to introduce a rating system where uh, other facilitators are creating the uh, practices and the other content uh, on the platform. So uh, that should be uh, a natural way to uh, promote the quality content. Um, from knowing uh, things that go uh, big, there of course might be a need in the future to implement uh, some kind of uh, approval of content if this becomes very problematic. Uh, but in the current phase, um, it is a closed beta. So uh, all the communities are onboarded by us uh, personally. Uh, so in this, in this stage, we don't really uh, have to do anything in this front because uh, we, choose, we choose communities that are aligned to the mission. Then uh, we will continue with the rating system. And if this uh, turns out to be insufficient, then uh, we will have to implement some kind of, uh, let's say, approval system for, for new content. But currently, uh, this is not uh, on the table. OK, thanks. Now, overall, I think the approach is, let's say, there is, it has the potential to really create momentum. To really spread out then. So this is definitely, definitely, this is my feeling. So I pass it on to Giuseppe. If somebody okay. has a noise of messages, please uh, mute your phone. 
thank you uh yeah um yeah i mean i like to, to see uh, that uh, every every time that we we have new functionalities in um, they always somehow come together in some way uh, the new language is uh, a way to reach more people and uh, uh, the, the, the common uh, the common concept behind uh, the library is uh, to allow people to to share something uh, uh, that uh, that matters. Uh, it's really it's really uh, it's really a nice uh, feeling to see that uh, our vision of a purposeful uh, social network uh, uh, takes uh, takes place. As a comment to the whole call, I just want to uh, to say that uh, of course uh, I always use this little space to ask uh, people to do as much as they can to actually use the platform and um, uh, even even uh, little uh, events or little uh, attempts are a good way to give us feedback uh, please use the group to ask us questions and uh, uh, if there is something uh, that is not clear uh, the example that Merlin brought up with uh, and uh, it is uh, with uh, uh, that sometimes we have with the onboarding, we are in a beta phase. Uh, so it happens that sometimes during the onboarding there is some problem. It doesn't mean that the functionality is doesn't uh, or it is not already there. Sometimes it is there. It's just that it comes that uh, we are, uh, are always updating and that and that there is something going wrong. So please reach out uh, in case there is some we need to to clarify some step. Um, uh, I try to share every time we have a new manual, but uh, even uh, without manual, sometimes we don't try to say, please ask for help when, uh, when you want to try to do something. And uh, with this reminder, I pass it to Valentin. Yeah, thank you, Valentin. Thank you. Okay, sorry, I missed it as well. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you, Giuseppe, for the feedback. <clears throat> as a well, what's in my mind? I don't know. <clears throat> as a as a designer, I pretty much always see like before, uh, like what the art looks like, and the uh, I actually helps creating like the whole the whole um, platform interaction and. I try to really think about making the yeah, the experience as smooth as possible. Uh, but what always yeah, amazes me is really like this dedication to join, like to, to really connect places of the earth, like R Russian, <clears throat> Russian, like uh, uh, unlocks, unlocks, yeah, as you said, really a really big part. Uh, I don't know with new language, uh, with new languages added, I really feel more and more that it's uh, super useful to to connect in a, like way more easily to to everyone so yeah i i enjoy that every at every single beta user call there is a new one or two or three new languages implemented um yeah that's good pass it on to pascal thank you uh, I enjoyed this also very much, and thank you for all of you uh, for being here and for making the arc, for helping the arc and supporting the arc. And yeah, I pass it to Gloria. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's always nice to take part of those beta calls every month, and they're really interesting. So thank you so much for your work. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna, I'm gonna use pretty soon with course functionality and upload some of our local activities on the arc soon. And um, yeah, it's, I'm also happy to see Michelle, so to see new communities, like new members coming up in those calls, like almost every month. And uh, let's hope to be to have this um, yeah, call to be bigger and bigger every time. And um, yeah, I hope that Hamid did understand something. I don't know yeah, how yeah. he felt <laughs> during the call. I think he was a bit confused. 
<laughs> but I'm so interested, and uh, I want to thank all and thank Lucas for his effort for to translate for many language so many people can join us. And um, I'm so interested, and uh, I'm so proud to join this team. Yeah, maybe you will help with Arabic. Yeah, I can. I, I also can translate for Arabic, or and I think French also will help because out of. Um, of uh, countries in North Africa and South Africa speaking I in French. French. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. We have a growing community of translators. Yeah. I almost uh, don't uh, manage to keep up to, to put all the translations in. <laughs> uh, so, who still has to speak? Uh, Patrick. Um, in... Patrick? Yeah, Patrick? Yeah, I think I'm the last one. Yeah. All okay. right. So, uh, yeah, I'm always happy and monkey also. <laughs> we, are, we are always happy to, uh, to uh, learn these new developments. But my feeling is that we, we are going together, basically. So uh, this is nice. We are going together and we have a link that is actually uh, uh, making we are, we are not only going by ourselves, but we are also going together as, as a network, which is very nice. I think I should move to uh, think about uh, creating a permaculture course, which could be a kind of best practice. Not easy, because permaculture is really something which is uh, um, related to the place where you, you, are, you are working. So. This should go on the principles of permaculture, basically. Taking Kabisa as, as a kind of example of uh, how you apply these principles. I will think about it. So another, another development for me is that uh, I'm going to Shanghai. We have a project with uh, Zhejiang University of Technology and um, a Dajin city to uh, start uh, Europe, China, center there which is a big project uh, we would hire 15 people and uh, i would also get uh, a two hectare land uh, in order to realize in uh, moganshan for the people in shanghai they know moganshan moganshan is a very iconic place next to shanghai which is uh, which are actually the first mountains that you can find when you leave shanghai um, I would receive a two hectare land there in order to uh, set up a duplicate of, of Camisa. Um, so nice. And all this will actually uh, um, uh, occur in, in conjunction with, with, with this beautiful arc and green step and you all. So uh, see you next time. I think I'm the last one. Yes. Um, thank you so much, Patrick. Um, that was quite inspiring. Um, thank you so much, Lucas. Uh, thank you, all of you. Um, what we, uh, until the ARC beta phase is until spring equinox 2022. Um, the objective for this beta phase is to validate the platform concept to confirm and improve the ARC functionalities and to iterate uh, the develop, uh, development and fix the bugs. So what we expect from you, the beta users, is to um, customize your communities, create um, 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 learning, uh, best practice library, uh, create events out of best practice libraries, invite your team and peers to join the ARC, and then you also can promote your activities on the ARC. And you should also ask questions in our Telegram groups if you have any, any issue or you have any questions or suggestion to add on to it. So for our objectives for 2022, uh, it's still to onboard 100 communities and um, to gain 10,000 ARC learners and then to be able to award 1 million impact points um, before the year 2022 ends.